It is another interesting edition of the market review where we discuss key developments in the financial and capital market as it affects the economy. Today, we'll be looking at the NICOM's regulatory action recently on Niger and Standard Alliance Insurance Companies. And my guests joining me virtually is Mr. Kerete Olagamikon, an insurance expert and management consultant. It's great to have you on the program, Mr. Kerete. It's much to Great to be here. Yes, thank you very much. And to our viewers, before we begin this conversation today, let's give you some stories from last week as it concerns the capital market. The National Insurance Commission issued a statement to all insurance stakeholders and members of the public that has cancelled the certificates of registration of Standard Alliance Insurance PLC RIC 091 and Niger Insurance PLC RIC 029 with effect from the 21st of June 2022. Also last week, the Nigeria Exchange Limited and Bank of Industry signed a memorandum of understanding to deepen capital market reach, build the capacity of stakeholders through financial literacy programs, facilitate market advocacy initiatives, and promote listings. Those are the stories, some of the key stories we had uh, last week. Now let's go on to our conversation for today, which of course is around the regulatory actions that took place last week, where Nikon canceled the license of two insurance companies, Niger and, of course, Standard Alliance Insurance Company. We want to understand what are the implications for the industry. And that's why I have Mr. Kereto Lagami Kon, an insurance expert and management consultant, to have this interesting conversation. So, Mr. Kereto, let's first begin. This action by NICO has significant implications for the insurance industry. And uh, we've been discussing this over the time on the show. Well, for shareholders and stakeholders, it's a lot to, to watch out for. But has this restored confidence in the regulatory oversight role of NICOM? I, I followed your statement on this uh, development, and you talked about restoring confidence. So far, interacting with stakeholders in the industry, has this restored confidence in NICOM and the industry? Thank you so much, Otobasi. I, I would say it has not restored confidence, but it is restoring confidence. Um, because it's been it's been a long journey, um, and so as it happens, the the expectations are that even more of this will happen to then restore that confidence. That's um, that's what it is, and um, a lot of people that have um, called to uh, inter interact with me um, have expressed surprise that it didn't even. Um, such a situation um, existed. So you can imagine that um, it's news to people, but it also begins to, you know, put insurance in, in the conversations that people are having. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really happy that at least it's restoring, like you said, because uh, that trust has been broken for some time and it needs to be need to heal and get that restoration in the industry. In your statement, I noticed that you commended NICOM on this action, though you say it was belated. <laughs> uh, I think that was a very uh, blunt one. But what happens to the policyholders of the two affected insurance companies? Um, so, so let me first of all say um, it was be is belated because you've had um, policyholders who have been crying since 2016 in the case of um, Niger Insurance. Um, and and um, if you recall, uh, Niger Insurance started having uh, those uh, problems which reflected in their financials, you know, and people started asking questions. So uh, you can imagine where you have a policy that says when it matures, you will get your money. And then getting money is just a matter of transfer. We should not take more than a minute or two, you know, but they've had to hold this getting your money some for two years, some for four years. And so that's how bad the situation was. Um, so today, uh, the policyholders are different from the people that have claims to make. You know, the, the, the claimants, as I would call them, you know, are the ones that um, will first be attended to in this situation, you know. And then the policyholders, uh, if their policies are still active and if they are live policies, then what will naturally happen, uh, according to what the law says also, is that those policies will be inherited by other uh, insurance companies. 
to continue providing cover for the for the policyholders. Yeah. Uh, if it's a general business, uh, then it it comes to um, a stop. Time on risk will be charged, you know, and whatever balance you have will be paid to you. But the re real issue is um, how much can these companies do in terms of paying out? Because in both cases, they've got properties that they have been trying to sell um, for some time, and they haven't been able to sell those properties to then bring back the money into their operations. Yeah. If they could have done this years ago, they wouldn't even need to be in this situation. You know? So uh, to a large extent, the policy orders are, are safe. It's just a matter of um, time. Uh, because the regulator is one of the mandates of the regulator, you know, is to protect the interest of the policy orders. And um, I'm sure, like they have said, that's what um, they will pay attention to. You know, if NICOM did not take this step, those policy orders and the claimants will still have continued waiting for the company until a time that they will say, oh, we can pay, you know, and who knows how long that will take. We also understand that based on this decision by NICOM, the uh, liquidator receiver managers that will be um, going through the whole process are, are being set. So we will also be monitoring how this whole process evolves because it's quite important. Everybody's watching uh, this development, uh, which is very critical to the industry. When you look at the development in terms of how you put it in your own assessment, the need to thoroughly examine the role of professionals in the insurance industry. Uh, you said that for, there's need to really look at the role of professionals in the industry with this development of NICOM on the two insurance companies. Uh, I would like you to expand shade further on this because uh, I believe that these companies affected must have engaged professionals in their activities and that should have been very clear in how they engage the policyholders and the various products and activities. Okay, okay, so, so this is what it is. Um, this is not the first time that we will have insurance companies' um, uh, certificates of registration being canceled. Um, and um, we've had, even had cases where uh, NICOM had gone into the management of some of those um, uh, companies, I mean, taking over the board management of those companies. Uh, it's some way professionals are allowed to, to um, walk away, so I would say, from this kind of situation um, is what I am actually referring to. Uh, companies are made up of people, board members, management, and all, and all human beings, you know? And when, this, when we say that a company has failed for whatever reason, whether anyone agrees or not, and the license is canceled, then there is a role that people played in putting the company in that situation. So we need to investigate the role that these professionals played. Insurance is a noble profession, and we cannot afford to allow people continue to see it as something that um, uh, can happen badly, and people will walk away from those situations, go on and get um, other appointments you know, in other companies, and just continue as if nothing happened. Whereas the company that they were involved in had lost um, their certificates of registration. Because so too, I tell you, the shareholders in these companies are gonna get nothing. I mean, they are going to get nothing. So um, you begin to imagine that you invested in a company mm. and it's been badly managed mm. to attract the cancellation of registration of um, uh, certificate of registration by the regulator. And then life goes on for everybody. You walk away, the shareholders are looking and wondering what happened. Yeah. So it's important to use these um, cases to determine the role that these professionals played. And if need be, suspend their professional um, certificates and investigate, and if they are found guilty of playing a role that put the company in this situation, then further steps will be taken in line with whatever the professional ethics um, uh, are. So, and this will serve as a deterrent, like I said in my statement, to other people. 
Yeah, I mean, the actual science is those people in, 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 in the field will definitely have to uh, take a look at this. It's a huge concern to the industry and, and I understand why you raised that. Now, Prochain is recent report titled How Giants of Insurance in Nigeria, in Nigeria Became Lily Pushans, the case of Niger Insurance PLC. It pointed out that analysts are seeking an industry uh, risk assessment and sustainability audits and test as a critical first step in reestablishing trust with the consuming public. This was several um, months ago when this report was done and of course very clear and apt before this action was taken. Uh, what is your reaction to that, uh, that cap part of that report? And of course now the verdict is out, NICOM has wielded its acts on Niger insurance. Um, what is your perspective? Now, um, one of the greatest challenges I would say the industry has today is what I would call lack of validation of information. Um, so in, in respect of um, uh, what Prochet said, and, and, and the Prochet report was very apt, you know, uh, it's like I said in a post yesterday, it's a, it's a story, a story that, that has been foretold, you know. So if you're talking about audits, and tests, sustainability tests, and, uh, and audits of insurance companies. Oh yes, it's overdue. But let me tell you what I mean by lack of validation. Um, insurance companies take on customers who provide all of the information, um, ID card, and all of that. And most of them don't have any way of validating those information that, that have been provided by the customer. And so you almost don't know the customer until there's a claim. And you find out that the customer does not live in the place he said he was living when he gave you the information. And you may just find out that he's not in the profession that he said he is. You know, so there is that lack of validation and these things create problems. And importantly, too, uh, we discovered in the course of the, discussing the recapitalization that even the uh, regulator way back in, 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 20, in 2007, when the first uh, second recapitalization took place, did not go back to verify the capital that these companies say they have, you know? And so that, those are the issues that uh, I believe uh, Proche is referring to, because you can't run a business without money. Yeah. And you can't rely, for insurance, you can't rely on the premium that comes in every day. So the, the situation is certainly, Call for, I mean, the, the exercise is called for, you know, and ought to be done because all of the information is with the regulator and an attempt to do that will, will confirm the status of these insurance companies pay time and we'll know when to intervene before the policyholders become hugely affected. But the policyholders have been turned to, to uh, poverty stricken people by, by the actions, you know, of insurance companies. And that's my greatest concern. I think uh, based on this, the Nigerian Insurance Association uh, will be looking out to see how they take proactive steps on this. And like you said, the professionals, the uh, accredited scientists, and of course, the regulator, we need to agree that there's need for this audit and stress tests of the insurance companies and proactive steps should be taken to avoid situations like this. But as we wrap up, uh, what's the horizon for the industry uh, for the year? many half of the year 2022. We're in second half now, and it's good to say happy new month, <laughs> uh, Mr. Kreate. But is it gonna be a good second half of the year for the insurance industry? This development, some stakeholders will be watching and wondering, where do we go from here, Nigerian insurance industry? Well, uh, like, you, like you said, okay, so it's a new month, happy July. Uh, I do believe that uh, the kind of thing that we are gonna see going forward is that the space these companies that have been uh, affected, occupied, will now become available for the good and well-run insurance companies. And so the tendency is for uh, people who have become attracted to now take their time to find out which insurance company should I do business with? What's the status of the insurance company? Are they good in the market? Are they uh, affected by anything? Because indeed, we, we still have some insurance companies that ought to have been on that, on that, on that list of uh, those that their certificates have been canceled, to be honest with you. 
So uh, going forward, yes, people will take their time down to decide. And we see, like we agreed a, a, a earlier, that the confidence will be growing in the, in the, in the, in the sector. Because um, when you have a situation where, let's say the space you have is uh, 100 meters, and uh, 30 meters is occupied by the ugly players. You know, now we've regained part of it with this action. And so it comes available for good players to operate. But uh, it's, it's to say that NICOM itself has to be ready to do one more thing before the end of the year in this same manner, so that the confidence that we are talking about will indeed be restored. People should be able to walk into any insurance company in Nigeria and do business without uh, thinking of whether or not they can pay claims, you know, and if you have claims, it shouldn't get to the point where your, your situation goes to the regulator. But if it goes to the regulator, it should then be dealt with in a manner that, that is seen to be, you know, proper and without any waste of time. So my hope is that we will, we will leverage on what has happened, you know, and indeed, I, I believe it will, it, will, it will become that way for the good companies to take back that space and deliver a better experience to insurance customers. I agree with you. I think it's time for more proactive steps by regulator and the good insurance companies to step on board and provide more valuable services to Nigerians because uh, the insurance industry, like you said, is facing that crisis of confidence and all the stakeholders and regulators have a key role to restore that confidence. Thank you very much, Mr. Kirito Agamikon, for taking out the time to discuss this uh, development and we will continue to engage you as we watch activities unfold further in the industry. Thank you so much, Mr. Basin. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Secretary Lagamikon, insurance expert and management consultant. Thank you very much. So that'll be all for this edition of the Market Review. If you have questions or suggestions, or part of those policyholders that are worried about this development, uh, NICOM's regulatory action on Niger and Standard Alliance mm -hmm. insurance companies, you can send your comments, views, or questions to otobasidabaseko at proshare.co. And also, you can join our website, www.proshare.co, to read our latest articles and stories and reports that we just talked about on the developments in the insurance industry, NICOM's decision, and of course, what we said about uh, the Niger Insurance Company, just to give you further perspective. And of course, our um, guest today also is a regular columnist on insurance issues on ProShare. You can engage us via a social media platform displayed on the screen. Uh, don't forget that you need to be informed to make the right investment decisions. Thank you for watching and keep discussing the financial and capital markets because they create wealth and economic opportunities.